Hello, in this video um, what I'm going to be looking at is I thought it would be fun to sort of take my mind or go back in my head to the 1980s and imagine I worked in WH Smiths or Boots and someone came in and said I want to buy one of these ZX Spectrum thingies but I know nothing about the games please recommend 10 for me to buy. Um, if I was unscrupulous obviously I'd say things like Renegade 3, uh, Kung Fu Master, Super Grand, so I could get rid of all those copies I could never shift, but um, I want people to love the Spectrum. So here are 10 games I would choose for them. Um, obviously, I can only choose 10. So here we go, the first one, R-Type, um, from Electric Dreams, based on Iron Corporation's um, arcade game. And it's a fantastic uh, conversion um, to the Spectrum. Bearing in mind this was only ever a, a 48k um, version. I don't think there's a 1 to 8k version. So that makes this even more fantastic. Um, the graphics, the way it plays, everything is just right. And this is an, if included as a bit of a guilt trip because I didn't include it in my top 10 arcade conversions or best looking ZX Spectrum games, which it arguably could have um, made either of those. So yeah. <laughs> You know, hands up to that one. I uh, I messed up a bit. Um, our type would be recommended for someone to buy. I would happily show them this and say, you need to get this game. So, going to move on from space type shooty things and head on to Bruce Lee. One of my favourite games of all time. I still play this um, nowadays just because it's such a laugh. Um, obviously, everyone... Uh, you know should know the, the premise of it but um, our hypothetical person has never seen this game before so just showing them very basically the gameplay and some of the comedy um, involved in it whether or not it was intentional I don't know but sometimes the interplay between Yamo and Ninja is um, you could just sit back and watch it forever they um, often if they're not having to go at you they have a pop at each other and you will see that coming up very very shortly uh, there they go um, <laughs> It never fails to make me laugh that. It's brilliant. I love it. Um, I do hope that was um, deliberate rather than a, a sort of programming quirk, but it's fantastic. I would next suggest, because it was only going to cost them two quid or three quid. I can't remember which one it was with Motos. Um, this from Mastertronic. Again, it's a, a great game. One of the most underrated of arcade conversions uh, on the spectrum. Everyone usually goes on about Chase HQs. Um, Wet Le Mans, uh, Renegades, etc. And this doesn't get the love I don't think it deserves, or I think it deserves. Um, it's a fantastically playable little game. Uh, great value for money and um, great soundtrack. Very simple premise, very simple design. So just let this bit play out for a short while before we go on to the next bit which is going to be, I can't actually remember what it's going to be, I can't see the screen from it. Oh, right, yeah, okay, here we go. The next one is Star Glider from uh, Rainbird, programmed by Real Time Software. This I would uh, suggest them just to, as a demonstration of what the Spectrum could do. I mean, I was playing this in 128K mode, but it also was out for, uh, the, you know, playable on the 48K, obviously stripped down a bit, minus a few of the bells and whistles. But bear in mind this is a game that started on the Amiga or ST, I think, I can't remember which one of the two it was. The fact that um, people had the balls to take on the job of converting it to the Spectrum, as well as um, pulling it off in the way they did, um, I'm not making it look very grand, <laughs> but uh, it is a fantastic game and really good to show off what the Spectrum is capable of. Plus, it was really nicely packaged. You got a novella, you got a flight manual, um, etc et and I'd flog them a copy of this without thinking twice about it it's a great game um, just not me making it not look great but that's the way I play I'm afraid so we move on we have Xeno um, this has popped up a couple of times uh, for me I can, I can never recommend this game highly enough especially if you are able to um, play two player games uh, you know if you've got a second person you can play along with Xeno is just fantastic and it, it kind of gets overlooked I think um, in uh, w when people talk about great games on the spectrum when people talk about great two player games in particular they often mention Target Renegade others like that which yep fantastic games but um, there's more out there and this could do with some 
uh, appreciation or some more appreciation. So I would uh, happily recommend this. Zeno from ANF Software. Frankenstein. Now, it's one of the older games in the, the selection from PSS in, I think this is 1984. Now, this is um, a great little game. It's a platformer, but with a difference in that you have really got to, um, you know, you can't jump or anything like that. You can only um, utilize these sort of like launch pads, basically, for want of a better word. And you've got to build your monster piece by piece, but you've got to get the correct pieces and you've got to make sure you avoid the uh, the uh, the minions. Right? And this is only the first screen and I've found this tough. Um, it took me about four or five times to play through to remember how to do this. I, I did have it um, back in the day and I did play it an awful lot and I loved it. And this just the first screen and it gets awfully tricky from this point. Well, for me it does. Um, everyone else probably just, you know, laugh at me. Um, that's why I'm not including much of the second level because it ended disastrously. Bubble Bobble. Um, again, if you can get two players um, into uh, into this, then this is one of the, the best um, of the bunch. Uh, fantastic arcade conversion, um, fantastic programming's gone into this. It's just so much fun to play. It's very, very simple in design, and as is often the case, the simplest designs make the best games, and Bubble Bobble is no exception. Great sort of twee soundtrack as well, uh, rendition of the, the Bubble Bobble theme. It's an absolute uh, gem of a game. And I would, you know, uh, I would easily point this uh, out to someone who was uh, who was looking for something good to play. Now, uh, bubble bubble section ends, and I move on to Starquake from Bubble Bus, 1985, by uh, Stephen Crow. Now, I played this game a bit back in the day. I didn't play it an awful lot, um, but it's considered to be one of the classic, if not, you know one of the all-time um, greatest uh, ZX Spectrum games and it does most things right and very very little wrong it's just so playable the the, the, uh, the graphics have got so much character and charm it's just uh, a great great game in every sense um, everything about it is polished um, everything about it is professional it's not an easy game well I don't think it's easy I can never work out what to do on it but it's still um, brilliant and worth uh, recommending to anyone now the next one I'm gonna recommend would be the trapdoor now might sound strange but Don Priestley's um, big graphics games, the likes of uh, Popeye, Benny Hill, Trapdoor, um, Through the Trapdoor, Flunky, Gregory loses his clock. I always have to be careful how I say that one. Are all fantastic um, looking games, uh, you know, and they, they sort of like take the Spectrum's uh, colour problems, etc. And they stick uh, two fingers up at them. And, you know, what great skill um, from Don Priestley um, was involved in, in pulling them off. Just amazing. A really lovely looking game. I'm just wondering about this. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I'm just doing it just to sort of show you um, what the game's like. I can't remember how to play it. <laughs> Next one, final game. Got to go with Attic Attack. Now, it stands the test of time really well. I've always preferred Ultimate's earlier output from their later stuff from uh, Saber Wolf and Beyond um, because they seem much more arcadey, much more playable. Night Law I did enjoy at the time, um, but nowadays when I've revisited it, I found it a bit a bit dull to be honest with you. But Attic Attack is just a charming sort of um, timeless little game. It, it sort of never grows old. Um, it seems to be fairly easy from some of the playthroughs I've. Uh, I've sort of watched to um, find your way around but a classic game so there we go I hope you liked the video if you did please let me know um, it would be great if you were to subscribe and if you've got any ideas of things that you would like to see me do then please let me know I'm open to su suggestions as ever thanks very much for your support take care and goodbye